I'm back. Breaker, breaker, breaker. So let's do a quickie. Um, I uh, had a had an interesting dream last night, which I'll try to relate. Boom, get right to the point because I'm tired. Woo! How about you? Um, I went swimming at the university pool after work, and it was a good swim. And now I'm pooped, and I'm just waiting to drop. So, um, setup. So I dreamt I was back in my first apartment, which I got when I was 23 and is in the suburb of Buffalo that I grew up in, which we call the Tonawandas, um, the city of Tonawanda and that surrounding area. Sorry about the lighting, by the way. I don't have that many lights on, but you know, let's go for it. Let's go for atmosphere. <laughs> um, so I was back in my first apartment which was almost at the corner of a street. Um, but this was a nicer version of that apartment because in this version, I was at the very end of the, the very end of the street and there was a whole uh, very, very bright green uh, yard right outside my door. And, and it curved. It was like a curved yard that kind of followed a curved street. And then across the street even was like another whole field of just bright green grass. And it just felt very, very, I can't describe it. It just, it just had that, that, that newness of summer feeling. It was very exciting. And I even said in the dream, oh man, you, I could almost live back out here you know, having lived in the city of Buffalo now for a number of years, well, quite a few, um, you know, I miss this, this, this green, this amount of green. But the irony is that even when I lived in that apartment, uh, there wasn't that much green on that street, though there was a park, um, you know, about a mile or two away that had a lot of greenery. In. And in fact, Buffalo is very green in the summer. I mean, it's a Northeast thing. We're on Lake Erie, um, being near fresh water like that is pretty great. And of course I'm tangenting, tangenting already, but we could be a destination of the, of the near future because fresh water, Hey Gabe, did you hear him? Uh, fresh water is always in demand. And if the coastal areas become, uh, less habitable over time, and water becomes a more um, precious resource than areas like Buffalo could see a lot more influx of people. And so I tell all my friends who um, are renting apartments, um, if you're going to buy a house, buy, buy, buy now, because we may be, we may be, we may have a larger population in the future. That aside, back to the dream in the dream. Well, the house was yellow. It had yellow siding, like canary yellow siding in real life and in the dream. And I lived in this, um, well, it was an apartment. I lived in the lower apartment of a two apartment house, a small house in the suburbs of Buffalo, as I said, the Tonawanda area. And um, I stepped outside and uh, a guy that I know, a, a musician that is more of an acquaintance, his name is Vic. Um, he was outside and he was biking by. And I think I said something like, oh, man, you know, being out here in all this green grass under the sunshine in the beginning of summer almost makes me want to live back in the suburbs again. And he was like, eh, nah, because he's a city guy. He's like, nah, city, city. Like, uh, oh, okay, I, well, you know. And I don't really have any plan to leave downtown anytime soon. But I guess you, you can never say never, right? You never know how you're going to feel in the future. But I, I do love the neighborhood that I live in, and um, and it it is actually quite green. We have we have a lot of trees um, on this street, and as you as you may have seen if you've watched any of my other videos, uh, plenty of birds and squirrels uh, come to my porch every day. Um, it doesn't hurt that I put the food out to draw them. So I'm standing in the field, and then there was like a, maybe a. A young woman or two young women, but I'm not sure. They weren't anybody I knew. 
And it was kind of like maybe they were just kind of hanging out because the yard next to my house was almost like a park. It was that big. And they were tossing around um, a baseball or maybe even a tennis ball and using it like a baseball and, you know, like with mitts and stuff. But then the funny part was um, I was like, it was like, it was like a, maybe a kind of a pickup baseball game was going to happen. And then I looked in my hand and I had this device that was like about this big and it was just a little nub. So I was holding it like this and the nub in my hand was um, an electronic device. It was a virtual baseball bat, okay? So the essence of it was that, that it was a holographic generator. It, when you turned it on, a virtual baseball bat would come out of the end of just this little nub, this tiny little nub, like, like the handle of an umbrella. That's how big it was. But, but like silver with like little electronics on it. And you'd turn it on and the bat would come up. But the bat had mass, like so that when they threw the ball towards me, I could swing at it with the virtual bat. But the weirdest part about the virtual, so virtual bat to play virtual baseball, but the ball was real, but the bat was not. It was virtual, generated by this device. But the strangest part about it was you couldn't see the bat. <laughs> it was on, and they told me it was on, but I had to imagine where the bat, like, where the bat was. So they're throwing the ball to me and I'm missing because I can't guess like where, so this doesn't make sense obviously, but I'm, I'm trying to guess where the bat would be in space based on the movement of my hand. So as usual, my dream, my dreams are bizarre and, and, and almost filled with jokes, um, by their very nature. And it occurred to me that Maybe this was some future version of baseball that like, if we get to the point where we understand molecularly how to manipulate matter to create objects from the energy in the air, which is not as far-fetched as it sounds, um, maybe someday you could have a virtual bat and you would have a little device. And so instead of carrying a bat around, you just carry the little nub around you press the button, the bat, the bat springs up, and then you play a baseball. And maybe the ball is virtual too. In this case, it wasn't. But, of course, to make that practical, you would have to see the bat. So that was the joke inside the dream because I couldn't see the bat at all. And then I was tossing the ball to myself in the air and trying to hit it with the bat just to get a sense of the properties of the virtual, invisible, holographic bat baseball bat so that is my dream and i'm gonna file that one under potential futures um because since i do dream about potential future technologies a lot um and um and the, uh mary in the comments for the last video was was saying that she felt that maybe some of my dreams might actually her intuition was that some of my dreams may be about past the past like or past lives but also future events, um, who knows um, where this stuff is coming from. But we are definitely, you know, with everything that Facebook is up to with becoming meta and like trying to create virtual worlds for people to play around in, um, certainly life on Earth is going to get stranger for sure. I mean, at least from the perspective of someone my age or perhaps your age, if you've been around long enough, um, and as I said in my first book, young people will be the early, early and first adopters of new technologies without hesitation because to them, this will seem like the way the world is. They will be comfortable with new technology because they don't have the fear that older people of all ages have about things that make them feel old or make them feel outdated. But the nature of evolution is such that everything always moves forward unless humanity is literally set back by natural disasters or 
God forbid, nuclear events or pandemics in the way that we were set back. There's always a march forward in terms of technology on, and it just keeps going. And then we get into the really um, oddball stuff like AI and, and where that may lead mankind. And much of this I've speculated on in my, in my first book, which came out in 2014. So if I may give myself a pat on the back, um, I'm not like a usual psychic in that I make um, predictions about events so much as I um, maybe have some insight or intuition and possibly I, I believe I write with my spirit guide sometimes. Um, I have some maybe some foresight of, of what is likely to happen because I, I, I'm a, I, I, I have a pretty vivid imagination, but I also have a very practical side about observing what happens with technological progress. That almost made sense to me. So I don't know if it made sense to you when you heard it. It's funny. When I, when I occasionally go back and watch um, bits of these videos, some bits they almost do seem, I'm not going to say they are channeled, but they almost seem channeled because I'm talking off the cuff and sometimes I, I almost feel like I don't know what I'm talking about. And then I go back later and I'm like, oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. So I hope that all does make sense. And that's why I'm going to stop now because I'm, I'm about to go off the path. Um, so yeah, so I dreamt about the future of virtual baseball with the virtual baseball bat in my hand. Oh, and the weight, the weight of it was very, um, unusual too, because it didn't, it didn't feel like it weighed anything the way a normal baseball bat would feel like it weighed anything. It did feel like it weighed just like the weight of the device that turned the bat on. It was almost like a, you know, like a lightsaber in, in some sense, except it didn't glow and you couldn't see the bat. So I hope that made sense to you. I hope you got a kick out of it. Um, God only knows what I'll dream next because that's <laughs> that's kind of how it is. So uh, next time I got something uh, I'm using or good, um, I'll be back. And in the meantime, let's all please continue praying for Ukraine. Peace in Ukraine. The protection, the protection of President Zelensky. Um, the protection of the people of Ukraine. The protection and wisdom of President Biden and Vice President Harris. And... Also, pray for the people of Russia and pray that Vladimir Putin and Mr. 45, President Trump, find their souls at long last um, so that this thing can come to an end sooner. This, this terrible war, which is costing the Ukrainians more than any of us can really imagine. So that's my spiel. I shall go. Um, I'm going to have a glass of whiskey and I'm going to go to bed. So I hope you're well. Thank you for tuning in. I have to do the five, I have to say the five things now. Please like this video if you liked it, because that helps the algorithms. Mm, algorithms. Like, share it if you enjoyed it, if you dare. <laughs> Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell, whatever the hell that is. And please comment, because I love comments, and especially um, comments uh, that make me think about things that that maybe come from an angle that I haven't considered. Um, co friendly comments, always welcome. Even comments of disagreement, if you articulate your point, because um, I, I don't know everything. I mean, who does, right? Okay, be well. Take care. See you soon, I hope. Okay, bye.